Hey guys, what's going on? Mark here today from TSC Industries back with another build series episode. And in today's video, we are going to be going over 3D scanning and 3D printing. I think you're really going to enjoy this episode, so be sure to stay tuned. But for now, we've got work to do. Damn, he ugly. All right, so 3D printing, pretty futuristic and mind-blowing technology, right? right? But did you know that 3D printing has been around for almost 40 years? 1981, Hideo Kodama of the Nagoya Research Institute published his account of a functional rapid prototyping system using photopolymers. A solid printed up model was built up in layers, each of which corresponded to a cross-sectional slice in the model, similar to a cake. <laughs> Sorry. Three years later in 1984, Charles Hull made 3D printing history by inventing stereolithography. Stereolithography lets designers create 3D models using digital data, which can then be used to create a tangible object. This was huge as it lets parts and manufacturing companies fire out prototypes left and right without investing huge sums into a full manufacturing process. Fast forward a few decades later, and 3D printing has become an industry standard for not only parts development, but also home development, art, jewelry, and even printing human organs. Gross. This was also the decade when 3D printing met the open source movement. In 2005, Dr. Adrian Bauer launched an open source initiative to create a 3D printer that could basically print itself, or at least print most of its own parts. Its 2008 release, Darwin, is a self-replicating printer that's able to do just that. The RetRap printer works by melting plastic and then building it up into three-dimensional objects which solidify when they cool. It starts with a filament of plastic, about three millimeters in diameter, rather like a piece of wire. And that filament is fed into a melting head in the machine and then extruded out of a very fine hole. The machine then scribbles of that molten plastic onto a flat plate to make a layer of the object that's to be built. The plate then drops down by a small fraction of a millimeter and the next layer is scribbled on top of that and so on and so on until the whole component has been built in three dimensions. Suddenly, people everywhere had the power to create whatever stuff they could dream of, such as a petite paint palette, a tortoise shell, a sexy squidward, planters, and even, yes, motorcycle parts. Now, 3D printing has really taken our company into the next level by allowing us to create parts and prototypes in-house with a very fast turnaround. Every single part we design, we print, test fit and make adjustments to as needed, such as our Honda Grom Undertale or our Works Pack Velocity Stacks. We also use it for more practical situations, such as a hard drive dock, some plaque mounts, and even a mic receiver mount for our camera. Now, you may be wondering, what does all of this have to do with our bike build? Well, when creating a custom one-off bike, you typically don't find many custom aftermarket parts, especially for a bike this new. So you will often and frustratingly find yourself having to create with what you have at your disposal. We just happen to have this super sick 3D scanning device, a couple 3D printers, and all of the software to make it work. Converting this bike into a cafe scrambler requires ditching all of the plastic fairings created by Yamaha, which leaves us with a bit of an awkward look and a few gaps that we want to fill in, namely, this front headlight area, the side panels, and a rear fender taillight setup. So without further ado, let's dive a little deeper into how we design and 3D print parts for bikes. Step one typically involves our initial scan to help determine all of the geometries we need to work with and around to begin our initial part design. Here you can see our engineer Vicente has attached reference nodes to a sheet of cardboard for this initial frame scan. The cardboard helps the scanner focus just on the geometry of the frame as we're not too worried about the innards of the bike including the wiring harness, air box, and other random connectors and mounting points. We'll take scans of all of the corresponding areas we want to improve and once we have those 3D scans imported we're able to start designing around Yamaha's predetermined mounting points. We can then take that initial design, print up our first tangible prototype, and with that make the much needed and necessary adjustments and see what works best. We are still in the design phase of these parts, but I did want to share with you one of our fundamental processes we use here for all of our products and how it relates to this build in particular. 
like this Yoshimura exhaust hanger behind me. That is a 3D printed prototype that we made plenty of revisions to. Once we got to a point that we liked, we were able to take that 3D scan and all of the design files, import it into our CNC machine, and voila, we have a finished CNC machined market ready product that we were able to mass manufacture. Pretty cool, right? Now, before our holiday break, we loaded up the bike and then made a trip on over to our painter and fiberglass guy, Frank the Tank of Tank Industries. Frank's a local guy who's deep into the automotive scene and culture, and we knew he could be the one and that we could rely on him to make this vision come to life. We had a very specific paint scheme in mind to pay tribute to the existing XSR line. We really wanted this bike to look like Yamaha made it and TST just improved it. Well, we finally got the call that the fiberglass work is done, so let's go ahead and head on over and check it out. All right, so we're here. Uh, Frank the Tank, Tank Industries, he did a phenomenal job here. Uh, this is our CRC uh, gas tank cover, uh, the race cover that we ordered. Um, initially, it had a mounting tab right here. I know I discussed that in the build series episode when we installed it on the bike. We discussed that we needed to get rid of that tab. It didn't really match up too well. So what we did, and uh, Frank agreed to do, is we brought this, we shaved off the tab. There was a tab here and it was sticking out past the frame. We actually followed this curve straight down and had it match along the entire front of the gas tank cover so that it kind of just seals that gap. For now, this gas tank, I think it looks great. Obviously, he is gonna go through and do some wet sanding, buff it out. Um, but I think from here, we're gonna give him the okay to actually paint it. So we're good, we're, we're good here. I think our gas tank cover, if you look at it from the side, it kind of just rolls real smooth. It follows the lines of the frame. So I'm happy. I think everyone else is gonna be pretty happy. And once it's painted, it's gonna look killer. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and give him the go. He's gonna get to painting. And uh, I can't wait to see the end result, and I can't wait to show all of you viewers. So be sure to stay tuned. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. Phase one of our XSR tank cover with the help of Tank Industries. As you can see, and as you heard, I did say this is phase one. We do have a big unveiling planned for this bike, but I did just wanna show you the current progress of the tank cover. There's still a, quite a bit of work we need to do. As you can see, we have the logos taped on here. We do plan on having these painted on. We just have them here for placement. We also have some other things that need to happen with the paint. But overall, this is the exact look we were going for. All right, so with all that said, um, I know this video, this episode is about 3D printing, 3D scanning, um, and we did just show you a very rough draft phase one of our gas tank cover, but all of this ties together, right? I'm gonna start at the front of the bike. We're gonna work our way to the back. I'm gonna show you what we've done. So to start off, this is a very rough draft of a wind deterrent slash cover for the headlight. Now we need to cover up the holes left behind that expose some of the wires, that just kind of make it look a little crude. We took the idea from Scrambler builds we found online where they kind of have a flat number plate and we grew on that a little bit. It wraps around here and on the inside it actually forms around the cluster perfectly. These are actually some early revisions of our windscreens or windscreen covers I should say. So as you can see here, this is actually support material from when the item is uh, 3D printed. So I believe it was laying like this, and it was growing upward, which is how you get these layers like this. When this is done printing, you have to remove it from the machine and remove these supports. And sometimes supports don't come off that easy. This was the very first revision we made. Then we made another revision that included the cutouts for the, for the uh, gauge cluster. This still wasn't to our liking, so I think we've reached a really nice shape contour on that piece without the design elements and we also cracked this one so it's kind of garbage anyways moving back just a tiny bit we also saw on the xsr 700 and 900 they have a nice little cover here 
Well, this bike doesn't have it. it does, there's a need for it. So here we are. This is another 3D printed prototype that is going to sit and cover this gap. These retaining um, surfaces here sit against the tubes, the frame tubes. And we still need to clean up these welds that we got rid of. Uh, and obviously, again, this is just a prototype. So some of the design cues aren't there just yet. But nonetheless, this gives you a general idea and gives us a general idea of what we have going on. We're gonna move back a little bit more. Now this fits perfectly around the contours of the gas tank cover and some of these mounting surfaces. As you can see, we have some yellow paint here, some yellow paint marker, things we still need to modify in the next revision. But this gives us another general idea of how things are gonna fit. So all of these pieces that I've shown you, the three pieces so far, Again, they're missing their design elements. We don't want to show you everything just yet. So be sure to stay tuned. I think these pieces are probably going to be one of my favorite features on this bike when it's all said and done. Minus everything else because I do love this bike. Um, but I'm really excited about this one. And again, 3D printed. You could actually see the layers as they were printed. This is ingenuity. This is what helps us bring products to the market. And we use this same method for so many of our products. In our last episode, we chopped our subframe. So we needed to find a solution and here we sort of are. We took some rubber hosing, we cut it to size, carved it in a little bit, and voila, we were able to stick it in this frame tube. This gives us a really good idea of the length of the rest of the subframe back here that we wanna go with. This helps us figure out how long our seat needs to be. This also helps us figure out what we can and what we need to do for a fender or a tail light or both. So here we also have another 3D printed prototype. This is actually of an XSR fender that we modified to mount to this bike. So not sure if we're gonna go with the fender just yet. Once we weld this tube on in hopefully next week's episode or hopefully in the next episode, um, once this frame tube is on welded on and the subframe is painted we'll get a really good idea of where we want our tail light to sit if we need a fender if we need a fender that has a tail light built into it there's a few different elements that we need to kind of throw in here we have a lot of ideas on the table for the rear end of this because we do want it to be tst-esque that's it for today's episode we're really excited things are moving along here um, i hope you all enjoyed this episode we had a really uh, we had a lot of fun filming it um, hopefully they don't use my three-dimensional scan of my face for anything other than educational purposes. But for now, this is Mark at TST. We'll catch you guys next time. Ride safe. Don't forget, as always, like, subscribe, turn that notification bell on, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. Email us, visit our website, tstindustries.com. Other than that, I'm out of here. You guys take care and happy new year.